In this video, I'm going to talk about lighting sprites, flipbooks, and tile maps, as well as using pixels per unit in relation to perspective cameras instead of messing with aspect ratios and resolutions. Um, so let's get started. First, let's go over to this View Options button and where it says Show Plugin Content. Make sure that's checked and then check the Show Engine Content. And then if we go to our Sources panel and scroll down, you'll find two folders for Paper 2D. So the second one will have the C++ classes. If you go into it and go into Paper 2D and go into Classes, you'll find the Paper Flipbook class as well as the Paper Sprite class. And you can change things in those to change the default materials, but we're not going to be handling code in this video. Just wanted you to be aware of where it was at. So the other folder is the Paper 2D Content folder. It contains all the materials that are used with the sprites, tile maps, and flipbooks. There's really only two materials in this folder. There's the default lit sprite material and the default sprite material, which is unlit. Um, and the rest of these are just instances of these two. So in this example, we're going to make our own material based off the default lit sprite material. So right click it and click duplicate. And I'm just going to call this Pat's lit material. And I'm going to move that material to this paper 2D folder I have. And that's one we're going to be working with. Next, I'm going to go over to View Options. I'm going to turn off the Show Engine Content and then go to that Paper 2D folder. So let's look at this material. So you'll notice a couple things about it. When you open it up, it's a mask material. That means you get an opacity mask. And as it says, it allows materials to either be completely visible or completely invisible. Um, the next thing you'll notice is we have four parameters. So we have a metallic, a roughness, a source texture, which says diffuse map, and an additional texture zero, which is your normal map. How this is set up, this additional texture zero, um, as a parameter. So if you create a sprite, inside that sprite in the details panel there will be an array of textures. If you add a texture to that, the first slot will say normal map and if you put a normal map in that slot it will apply it to the sprite. There's a way to automate the processes using suffixes and I'll go over that as well. But one of the problems we have is this specular value is set to 0.5 and this makes your sprite a little bit shiny. It's almost unnoticeable but I just like to put a zero on it. So press 1 and left click, and I'm going to put a 0 on that. Also, emissive is automatically set to 0, and even though we're not going to be using emissive colors, that doesn't mean you might not want to use it for something. So in this case, I'm going to make a right click and scalar parameter, and I'm just going to call it emissive, and it will show up in our instances, and we can change the emissive color if we wanted to. So next, I'm going to click Apply and Save, and then close it. Okay, so with our material set, I'm going to right click it and create a material instance. And this is what we're going to use. This material instance is what we're going to use with all of our sprites and our flipbooks. So you can set those manually when you bring them in. It's going to use the default unlit material, and you can go into each sprite and set it to this new material we've made. But instead of doing that, go to Edit, go to Project Settings. On the left hand side, if you scroll down to Editor, you'll find Paper 2D Import. Now there's a couple of really important things in here. So starting at the top, you'll see this default pixels per unit Unreal. So it's set to one, meaning if I bring in a 32 by 32 pixel sprite, that's how big it'll be on screen. So if you're using a like 1920 by 1080 resolution camera, that's going to be very, very small. So to get it to fit on screen better, you can change this value. And the lower the value, the bigger the sprite. So if I change it to 0.1, it will scale that up 10 times, making it a 320 by 320 sprite. And honestly, that is the best thing to do is just scale up all of your sprites to fit with a perspective camera instead of trying to mess with the settings of the perspective camera to get the right look. Because um, if you use it, other cameras, you're going to have to change all of those as well. And you can change resolution using uh, commands as well as game user settings. But it's easier just to change the default pixels per unit Unreal. Uh, to what you think the ratio should be and you can do this through trial and error it's really quick you can also manually set this for each sprite but it's good to have them all the same size just so the pixels fit together I'm going to change this back to one and I'll show you how to change the size on the sprites individually next thing to look at is this normal map texture suffix and this base texture map suffix so what this means is those two texture variables that we have within our material that we just made if the diffuse map ends in a D, when you make a sprite, it'll take that diffuse map and it'll look for another texture map that has the exact same name but ends with this N or normal, and it'll automatically apply it to that additional texture slot one. So that's how you can automate the process through naming. Um, next, if we come down, every sprite's gonna use this unlit default mask material. So we're just gonna change that to our material, and that's all we really need to do. So all future sprites will use the material we just made. I'm gonna be using a Valiant Knight 
um, idle animation that was created by Will from Untied Games, and I'll put a link to his stuff in the description. He makes excellent pixel art, and his YouTube channel has great time lapses about how he makes the pixel art. Um, he's worth checking out. The Nova map I'm going to be using was generated using a Lewis script written by a Redditor named Securus, and I'll put a link to his GitHub to that script. That script runs with a sprite. And then the last link I'm going to put in the description below will be a link to a video about how to create normal maps for pixel art specifically. He covers a bunch of techniques and he goes into depth and is very clear about each of them. And it's worth checking out, especially if you're wanting to manually make really detailed normal maps for your pixel art. So I'm just going to drag those two textures in. Unreal will let you know that one of them was a normal map. You can just press OK. So we need to apply our, our Paper 2D texture settings so that this is pixel perfect. You can do the same to the normal map, but it won't actually change anything because it is a normal map. So it's still gonna be blurry. So to fix this, come over here and you'll find textures. If it's folded up like this, just expand it. Go down and you'll see filter and change that from default to nearest and it'll be pixel perfect. Now since this is unreal and I did not check the invert Y using the script, uh, we need to flip the green channel. So you can just click it over here in texture, flip green channel. I'm gonna save that and close it. So now they're both pixel perfect and ready to be made into sprites. Since they share the same name, when the sprite is generated, it will automatically apply the normal map. So if we right click the diffuse map, go to sprite actions, and I'm gonna use extract sprites since this is a sprite sheet. I'm gonna use the automatic sprite extraction mode. As you can see, we don't have any erroneous pixels, so there's not gonna be any additional sprites that we don't want. And I'm not gonna change anything else, so I'm just gonna extract. So if we open one of these sprites, and we switch to perspective so you can see the lighting. You can see he kind of has some lighting on it in this mode that you can see how there's an edge of blackness where the light's coming in from the side. If you'll notice over here in this details panel, the additional texture, it automatically applied the normal map. And how it does that is it takes the source region from its diffuse texture and applies that same source region to the normal map. If you needed to manually do this, all you do is hit plus. It'll even tell you it's a normal map and then just drop down and apply the normal map that you want to use. So if we drag him in and zoom in, you'll see he's really tiny, but he is lit with that edge map. And I'm going to grab my light source and rotate it just so we can see him better. So you'll notice he's washed out and he's tiny and reflecting some light. So that is because Unreal uses eye adaption as well as auto exposure. And I'll show you how to change that in just a second. But I'm going to select all of these, right click, go to asset actions, go to bulk edit via property matrix. In the sprite drop down, you'll find pixels per unit. I'm going to set that to 0.1, which will scale him up 10 times. I'm going to save that. And now he's big. We can get a better look at him. Um, you can also manually do that each per sprite by doing the same thing, opening it, and setting the pixels per unit. The best thing to do is to go to the editor, go to project settings, scroll down to the paper 2D imports like we did before, and just set it to 0.1 in here or whatever. Um, scale you're looking for. So now all future ones that I import will be scaled up 10 times. Um, so next, let's go ahead and make a flip book so that we can see the differences. So I'm going to right select all those, right click, I'm just going to name this FB, and that'll be our flip book. You'll notice when you open it, it will use the mask unlit sprite material. You can only change this in code to get it to use a different one. You can even edit the mask unlit sprite material and it will still generate a new version that looks exactly like this, just because of how the constructor works, I believe. So to change this, we just click it, change it to the material we want. You're gonna have to do that every time for every flip book you make. Um, if you look at him, you'll see he's lit and we have no real issues. He looks pretty good. However, once you drag him into the game, you'll see he has the exact same problems where he's kind of white and washed out from auto exposure and in this case eye adaption. Also if you zoom in you'll notice there is a little bit of artifacting that didn't show up in the flipbook preview. There is no way to fix this that I'm aware of. It is just how Unreal renders things and it's honestly not a big enough problem to dissuade you from using Paper 2D. So once you package this and start playing this and there's other stuff on screen you wouldn't even notice it unless you were trying really hard to see it. And also if this were you know, a smaller resolution or if we were using an orthographic camera where we've set the resolution, you might not even see it at all. It might not even show up. But I don't think it's something to really worry about. So the next thing, let's click the texture and right click it and go to Sprite Actions. I'm gonna make a tile set for it. So I'm just gonna open this tile set. The tiles are 79 by 63 for this specific Sprite. And I am not gonna go through and set the collision, but you can see we can select each one. 
each frame. So I'm going to right click a blank space. I'm going to go to Paper 2D. I'm going to make a tile map. Naming doesn't matter. Um, I need to come over to the setup and change the tile width to 79 and the tile height to 63 to match the sprites we're going to be putting in. I'm going to click the active tile set and apply the one we just made. And I'm going to click fill and I'm just going to fill this up and you'll see that it looks as if it applied the normal map and sometimes it will but sometimes it won't automatically apply the normal map for the tile set. So to verify that all we got to do is go back to our tile set and you'll see in the additional textures it did not apply the normal map. So we were looking at a lit view of the sprite without the normal map. So all you have to do is add the additional texture, scroll down, get the um, normal map you want and it will apply it. So now if we go back and look at this you'll see that he has the edge lighting that we want. So let's close that out. I'm going to drag this tile map into the screen so that we can just see it in comparison to the others because you'll notice in a second that there is a difference once we fix the eye adaption. So with them setting in the background we have our flipbook, we have a sprite, and we have a tile map. To solve the eye adaption for the editor only you click show, scroll down to post processing, and uncheck eye adaption and you'll notice that they're no longer glowing up and they look relatively the same. And I can even spin the light source and you'll see the normal maps working on all of them. However, if we turn the light off, you'll notice that the tile map and the flipbook remain semi-lit and they won't go completely black like the sprite. I don't know why this is. I don't necessarily know how to fix it, um, but I think this is fairly acceptable in most cases, seeing as everything is going to have this because you're going to typically use tile maps for most everything. Um, and there's things you can do to make the sprite look lit like this to try to match it. But overall, I think this is acceptable and this is as good as we're going to get using the lighting as far as I am aware. So with I'm going to turn eye adaption back on just so you can see the glow up. So with the lights off, sprite remains black and everything else glows up as if it were using auto exposure or you were looking through a, an eye adjusting to the light. So to fix this glow for every actor in the scene, um, is something other than the editor. So if we hit play, you'll see it's normal. And then if I come over here and delete the light source, the glow up will happen. And that will happen even if I turn off the um, eye adaption. So to fix that, you can do two things. Change your cameras to no longer have auto exposure or add a post-processing volume that nullifies auto exposure. So I'm going to show you the post-processing volume first. So come over to modes, search classes, type in post. I'm going to drag that in. And if we come inside the post-processing volume in the search panel, type unbound, and that'll give you this checkbox, infinite extent unbound. That means it'll apply to every actor. And we can close that search. And then if you go to lenses and you scroll down till you see exposure, you'll see these two options, min EV100 and max EV100. That's your auto exposure. So just change them both to one. And you'll see in the scene already, uh, without a light, he has gone completely black and the rest of them have gone gotten dark. So if I turn the light back on, everything looks normal. If I press play, they don't glow up like they did before. And if I come and delete the light, they go dark again. So that's one solution. And I think honestly, that's the best solution. But the other solution is to change your camera. So if I go to this little test character that I made, and I go to the camera we're looking through. If I scroll down to post process, I click on lens, I go to exposure, you'll see the min EV100 and the max EV100. So if I set both of those to one, compile and save, and I come back to the editor, you'll see with that post processing gone, the eye adaption has turned back on for the editor. But if I press play, we're looking through a camera that no longer has auto exposure and they look as we want them to. If I delete the light source, same thing, they go dark the uh, sprite completely disappears. And that's going to be it for this video. I think this is the best lighting you can get in Unreal for sprites without using any kind of coding. Uh, and this is probably the best workflow you can get as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing as well as giving me a like. If you have any questions about anything I talked about or covered in this video, just shoot me a comment down below or contact me on any other median. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.